you have had such an incredible eye for talent over the course of your career. Um, he mentioned a few of the of the Academy Award fin winning filmmakers who who started with you, but I, I came up with a list just of of directors who have made movies for Roger over the years, and the list reads: George Armitage, Paul Bartel, Peter Bogdanovich, James Cameron, Fantas Ford Coppola, Joe Dante, Jonathan Demme, Curtis Hansen, Monty Hellman, Jack Hill, Ron Howard, Gail Ann Hurd, Jonathan Kaplan, Nicholas Rogue, John Sayles, Martin Scorsese and Robert Town. That list is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. So I think what, what everyone in the audience is wondering, I mean, people in the audience who are, are making movies and are looking for new talent, and then the younger people in the audience who are, or are beginning their careers want to know, what did, what did these people do to impress Roger Corman, and what did you see in them to, to give them these opportunities? Well, a, num a number of them uh, were working as my assistant. Francis Coppola was my assistant. Jonathan Demme was my assistant. Uh, others were working in different uh, categories. Ron Howard, of course, as an actor. As a matter of fact, um, the one you didn't mention, uh, the people who have forgotten, Irv Kirshner, uh, right. was, uh, was a friend of mine. As a matter of fact, uh, Irv was a brilliant director. He was doing documentaries. and. Uh, the first film in which I hired another director was Irv. He went on to having a great career. He directed the second Star Wars for, for George Lucas, which was probably the peak of his career. Well, in addition to, to your eye for talent, you've also had your finger on the pulse of pop culture throughout your career. I mean, you've always managed to tap into genres at exactly the right time. And so we saw some examples in the trailers we were watching tonight of... Uh, horror films that you've made, but also crime films, gangster films. You've invented genres like the motorcycle picture and car chase films, um, and you've distributed and made art house films, and you've even made family films, films for children, correct, over the course of your That's career? That's correct. I would like to salute my wife, who's, uh, who's here tonight, Julie, who has made a number of the successful family films. I Well, so how have, you, how have you decided or discerned when a particular genre was, would be popular, would be uh, a box office success, and, and, um, and, and how did you figure out when maybe that genre was on the wane? Uh, to a certain extent, it would be a genre that appealed to me that I felt would appeal to uh, the public as well. So it was a combination of being aware of the commercial potential of certain genres and also being a genre I wanted to work in. For instance, The Wild Angels, which you mentioned, which was the first of the Hells Angels film, which uh, was, was the opening night film at the Venice Film Festival, complete with a condemnation by the U.S. State Department, <laughs> who uh, sent out a statement that this was not representative of American culture. Uh, it uh, was, I was told, was the biggest grossing uh, independent film ever made. It spawned a whole group. I would say there must have been 50 motorcycle films in about seven or eight film years. And I didn't direct anymore. I directed The Wild Angels. I produced a couple of them. And it follows a cycle. Uh, you start with something that's nobody's seen before, like The Wild Angels. It does this. And then other films come in, you build up a cycle, and after a certain period of time, too many motorcycle films are being made, and they drift down. Now, that happened a little bit with horror films. Horror films were out of fashion when I made The Fall of the House of Usher, which was the first of the Edgar Allan Poe films. The Pit and the Pendulum, which you'll see tonight, was the second. Horror films were at a low level when I did uh, Usher. It was successful. They started to build up. And of course, I can't claim uh, any originality for horror films that have been made since films have been made. Uh, but a cycle built up where the whole group of horror films, too many, it started to fall. But because horror films really do, uh, I believe, affect the unconscious mind and uh, are a staple, the cycle goes like this, it drops, horror films are out of style, 
but then somebody hits with a new version of a horror film and the cycle builds, builds back up again.